Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, September 6th, 5.30 a.m. Central Time. Grain market's a little bit higher this morning. December corn futures up two and a half at 488 and a half. November soybeans up 12 and a half at 1377 and a half. December Chicago wheat up six at 605 and a quarter. December Kansas City wheat up six and a quarter at 730 and three quarters. December spring wheat up five and a half at 767 and three quarters. We had a big drop in soybean ratings yesterday. Let's start there. Yeah, we sure did. Uh, the crop was rated 53% good to excellent nationally compared to 58% the prior uh, the prior week and 60% on average. Illinois, the country's top soybean state, dropped a whopping 10% in the good to excellent category. USDA estimates that 16% of the crop is dropping leaves leaves nationally versus 13% on average. That's a big drop, big drop. Uh, it's normal seasonally to see a drop in crop ratings this time of year, but a 5% drop in the good excellent category at any point during the growing season is substantial. The states that saw the biggest declines week over week, Illinois was the big one, went from 68 down to 58. Uh, Kansas went down 12 points, 37 down to 25%. Good to excellent Kansas. That's not good. Uh, South Dakota went from 54 down to 46. Now, if we look at a chart of soybean ratings seasonally, this is the worst rating seasonally since 2012, but we're much, much better than 2012. In 2012, you were in the low 30s in terms of the good to excellent uh, rating. So you're 20 points better than 2012, but still the worst since 2012. So uh, what does this mean exactly in regard to the crop and the markets? I don't really know. I mean, you've got to remember that crop conditions are a beauty contest. It's a view from the road. It's not really, it's not samples or uh, field uh, scouting or anything like that. It's, it's really just a view from the road. Uh, USDA is going to update its yield numbers next Tuesday, I believe, maybe some acreage adjustments as well. So the market is reacting favorably to this. You're up 12 cents in beans, which really is not a big move in the grand scheme of things when you're talking a 13 and a half to 14 dollar soybean market but a positive reaction nonetheless what about corn ratings so those also declined the crop was rated 53 percent good to excellent nationally compared to 56 percent the prior week and 60 percent on average as with soybeans illinois dropped 10 percent in the good to excellent category usda estimates that 18 percent of the crop is mature nationally versus 16 percent on average I think Missouri actually saw the biggest drop. They went from 41, or no, I'm sorry, that was a nine point drop, 41 down to 32 in Missouri. Uh, Illinois down 10%, 67 down to 57. South Dakota down 10%, also 54 down to 44. I believe uh, this is not the worst rating since 2012. I think it might be the second worst rating since 2012. But in any case, you're, it's not 2012. You're much, much better than that. But um, a three point drop is a big deal. Uh, in regard to expectations, the trade was looking for ahead of this report, a 2% drop in corn and I think a 3% drop in beans. So we were expecting a drop. It just so happens that the uh, drop is a little bit larger than expected. So heavy rains may cause more damage to Chinese crops. The northeastern region of China is forecast to receive above normal rainfall this month. Heavy rains in August caused flooding in the region, damaging corn and soybean crops. Some areas are expected to receive 20 to 50 percent above normal precipitation here in September. China's northeastern region is the nation's top producer of soybeans and corn. China is expected to produce 282.3 million tons of corn this year, although yields could be lower due to flood damage. So they're talking about these like super heavy rains in um, September. I don't know if I'm seeing that necessarily. So if you guys look at this, if you're watching on YouTube, I've got a map of uh, Chinese corn production. This stuff in the in the far northeast, the dark green, that's the the question mark. That's where they've had the heavy rains. This is the forecast for the next 10 days. And, and yes, yeah, some areas will see some additional rains, but uh, not everywhere. Now, in terms of what's being projected and the crop size of the crop, USDA is still indicating a near record uh, Chinese corn crop, like just slightly below last year, the 277 million metric tons. China is talking 282, I think. So even higher than that. So while we've had all this talk of um, uh, flooding and, and reduced yield prospects in those areas, I'm not seeing re I'm not seeing that necessarily reflected in the crop estimates. And and to take a step or two forward, uh, the question for a lot of you guys watching is China going to need to come in and buy U.S. corn? And the answer to that so far has been absolutely not. 
China has like nothing on the books in terms of U.S. corn for the now current marketing year. Uh, we'd love to see China come in and buy some corn, but it just has not happened uh, yet to any material extent. So if you guys have not already subscribed to our premium content, you need to do so. You're not going to find content like this anywhere else. Joe, tell me about the video you put together yesterday. We're looking for a harvest low, right? Uh, it does happen. Harvest lows do happen in September uh, fairly often. Now, identifying a harvest low is kind of subjective in nature because um, they can happen super early. Like the corn market bottoms in, in July or first week of August, you call that an early harvest low. I don't know. It's, it's a sub subjective statement. But what I did in yesterday's video, I went back through uh, the whole post-ethanol era. We started with 2006 and uh, we went up to last year, looked at all the December corn charts, looked at the harvest lows, tried to identify some analog years, some years that look similar. I think there's one in particular that really sticks out. And then tried to look at some years where we saw uh, fall rallies, like September, October, November rallies. When we rallied uh, during those months, why did it happen? If you guys want to see that video, um, go to standardgrain.com. You can sign up this morning. I'll send you over this morning's video, this morning's email. Um, I think you'll see the six most recent premium videos if you sign up this is a 50 dollars per month subscription guys you can cancel at any time no other fee no other obligation nobody will try to sell you anything else just a ton of info direct from us every single business day u.s weather forecasts are a mixed bag here this morning the seven day government forecast offers rain chances for the southern plains in addition to areas of wisconsin and michigan the 10 day Euro model is similar, but offers additional rain for southern areas of the Mississippi River Valley near near the end of the model run. The GFS, however, is much drier over the next 10 days, but does introduce some Corn Belt rains in the extended period. If you get out to mid month or now we're talking through September 22nd, um, if, if the rains do return, it might be too late uh, for uh, crop prospects and, and revival of crop prospects, if you want to put it that way. Uh, at this point, we're probably looking more so at the river situation and the way that uh, the projections look right now, it's going to get worse before it gets better. We're six feet below normal um, at Memphis this morning. And the projection is that by Monday, you're going to be like nine feet below normal. I think where we bottomed out last year was about 10 feet below normal. So this is uh, not good in terms of export prospects, uh, basis, uh, spreads, all that stuff. USDA reported a flash sale of U.S. soybeans on Tuesday. U.S. exporters sold 9 million bushels of soybeans to unknown destinations for delivery during the current marketing year. A slightly larger amount, but still not enough to move the needle. We'd like to see some some bigger sales. This could be China, could be could be maybe not. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, but we'd like to see some some bigger type sales. This is just more routine business. Our book of exports is still off, I think. 25 or 30 percent versus the same period last year we're not quite where we need to be u.s corn shipments declined last week usda reported that 481,309 metric tons of corn were inspected for export during the week ending august 31st the print was down 20 percent on the week and down 11 percent versus the same week last year Soybean shipments increased 16% on the week, totaling 378,595 metric tons. Wheat shipments were reported at 299,862 metric tons, a decrease of 23% compared to the previous week and down a whopping 44% compared to last year. So we've got the corn shipment chart on the uh, screen here. Corn shipments uh, typically do not begin to see a material improvement until like late december into january like when you see that q1 on the chart that's where you typically see your seasonal spike it's post harvest like immediately when we start to ship soybeans so you you should start to see better soybean shipments uh late september into early october whereas corn shipments you may be waiting two or three months until you see a material improvement here Saudi Arabia has extended its voluntary, voluntary oil production cut of 1 million barrels per day until the end of the year. Russia also extended its voluntary cut of 300,000 barrels per day until the end of the year. The cuts add to additional voluntary reductions of 1.7 million barrels per day by other OPEC members through the end of 2024. The news resulted in the November Brent crude contract rising above $90 per barrel on Tuesday, a level that we have not seen since November of last year.
I've got a chart of the WTI. Um, this looks quite a bit better or more friendly, which is uh, good or bad or whatever. I mean, in terms of commodity prices, I suppose this is a positive, but means uh, higher prices at the pump. I know diesel prices have come up. You had this whole time frame from like fourth quarter last year all the way through two weeks ago where crude was just range bound. You traded, you know, mid 60s to mid 80s, and that was the range. And now it appears as if we've broken out to the upside. We peaked uh, just above $88 in spot month WTI futures this week. So this has a number of implications. I mean, in terms of overall broad commodity prices, I suppose it's positive, but then it also brings back like the inflation uh, type factor. If gas prices get high enough, that means more inflation. It could mean have interest rate implications. There's a lot of, of different um, uh, impacts that higher crude prices could have if they continue. Uh, cattle market was what, mixed bag yesterday? Yeah, just a mixed bag. Feeders ended the day 47 cents lower to 27 cents higher. Live cattle futures ranged between 20 cents lower to 60 cents higher. Choice box beef ended the day at 315.48. That was up 99 cents. Select ended the day at 289.54. That was down 75 cents. Outside market's pretty quiet. US dollars off a little bit. Stocks are down marginally. Bonds up marginally. Crude oil down 31 cents in the October WTI this morning, 86.38 last trade. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you Thursday.